Love and Life Hitched Up with a new segment to our channel called Added to Our Tab. TJ and Red from Love and Life Hitched Up. In this episode, we are going to talk about how we bring our bikes with us on our Tab 400 when we go RVing. We love to bring our bikes. It gives us the freedom to roam. In this section of the video, I'm going to put both of our bikes up onto the jacket on the front of our Tab 400. The jacket is already set up specifically to carry these two bikes and after much trial and error, I was able to determine which bike goes to the back, which bike goes to the front. The manufacturer suggests the smaller bike to the rear, and that does hold true. It is a little easier to get the smaller bike into the back, but you will, prior to using this, have to set up the wheel mounts, the frame guides, and the padding that occurs uh, on the frame to stop any rubbing of the bike against the frame. The jacket comes with several parts. Some are curved to cradle the tire and some are straight and those are used to mount either to the frame or as a friction point along the wheel to allow you to strap the bike so you won't get a rocking sensation of the bike as you travel. They're all held in place by these rubber straps with numerous holes. You pull over the tire and clip down and that keeps the tire from bouncing in and out of the cradle and also secures the bike from swaying front to back so it will not impact the frame of the jacket and or the front of your trailer. One bike down, another one to go. Like most bike racks, you oftentimes have to change to opposite directions when mounting, meaning one bike facing one direction and one the other because of the overlap of the handlebars. Same is the case here with the jacket, um, allowing the handlebars to overlap the seats um, having the adjustability allows you to raise or lower the front or back wheel to give you that clearance between the seat and the handlebar depending on the height of the rider of the bike. The seat may be higher or lower thus giving you space. Orientation of the pedals is also a consideration when mounting here because of the frame you don't want the pedals rubbing against the other bike frame or the jacket so here you can see me adjusting the location of the pedal. Keep in mind that the bike is held by the wheels so you will not be able to crank the pedals as if you were on the ground. Um, you would have to adjust either if you have a free hub to, re to the reverse and or make sure that you pre-line your pedals before putting it up. So, forth. so right from the factory we had them install the jacket uh, aero double bike lift. So I'm going to give a little bit more information on that, some pros and some cons and some of what we've come across. As you can see the jacket goes right onto the front tongue, bounce right above the plate. Like I said I had them installed directly from the dealer, uh, made life a lot easier. I didn't have to take off the tongue elevation. Uh, jack to be able to get that in there and go over some plates and things. Uh, it's a great addition.
key components that you have to see. It has these V-shaped arms that strap onto the bike and these key points, braces against the wheel and elevation where it holds onto the wheel um, and rubber straps that keep everything from moving around. I do add additional locks uh, when the bike is in a stationary position. Uh, just keeping honest people honest. You can see the clearance on the back between the bikes and the trail themselves. Uh, I will say that the system does require a little bit of upper body strength to uh, lift and place the bikes on. But even before that begins, the cross arms have multiple holes that you have to determine uh, based on your bike frame size, wheel size, uh, where you're going to be able to position those pieces uh, on there. So it does take a little trial and error. Uh, putting them on, taking them off, readjusting. Uh, it's pretty simple setup. They are held on with just a cotter pin uh, on the back, which leads me to the next point for uh, the reason why I also put additional locks on there. Uh, somebody could theoretically come along, pull all the cotter pins, and just remove the bike from the rack uh, if you did not secure it through the frame. I added a few additional uh, bike locks or padlocks on here so you can't just unscrew the sections of the lock the jack itself and just remove it now granted that would take a person a considerable amount of time but if you were to leave your you know vehicle parked somewhere um, for a period of time unattended that's just another risk of something you would want to uh, keep in mind um, like I said, it takes a little bit amount of effort to get on there. I don't know this would be rated for e-bikes. Uh, I would say probably not. It would be extremely heavy. Uh, though putting my regular road bike on this would be very easy uh, as it would be considerably less. My wife's bike, as you can see, is a step through. So there is no cross top bar. Um, so holding via the wheels is a, was a much better setup for us based on her. Uh, bike style um, so pros are uh, you can hold different f uh, bike frames um, probably the two biggest cons are the necessity to have the strength to lift and place the bike up onto the wheels uh, wheel mounts and lastly uh, we learned the hard way I do go over a little bit more and later on in the video about the effects of rain and the placement of the bikes in front of the trailer. So one thing I will say is uh, invest in a bike cover because uh, we do get caught in some rain uh, while driving and the uh, rain driving through the gear mechanism did wash some of the oil off of the bikes onto the front of the trailer. I just have to get a degreaser to get that off. So that is one thing I would definitely say. This is TJ and Red from Love and Life Hitched Up. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Click that bell icon and make sure you subscribe. And remember, when you're out there loving life, do it hitched up.